Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. Now, if you haven't been watching our epic series on this cool Bally 8-Ball Deluxe Limited Edition, that's right, I said Deluxe Limited Edition, deal with it. If you haven't been watching our epic series on this, uh, make sure to go back and check it out. We have a playlist here on our channel. So you can see every video. Uh, basically, a customer brought us this, and it was a machine that the head had been damaged on. Um, and so he had a new head made, uh, rebuilt that part of the cabinet, uh, and then took most of the game apart. So we've replaced the wiring back in the game. Uh, he had installed a hard top on it, got it looking really good. Um, and on the previous video, we worked through the MPU the lamp boards, and get, got all of the lights working. So um, our next thing that we need to do is work on the displays. Now, uh, my brother, Joey, has already re-soldered the displays. There is a little board that goes back here. And this lone connector connects to that little board and makes the displays work. So on one of the videos that, that we did, we rebuilt the dis, the uh, display voltage section, the high voltage on the solenoid driver board. So we should have everything that we need. Uh, let's have Joey look at those displays. He wants to talk about them for a second, and then we're gonna snap them in place and see what they do, and then repair whatever needs repaired on them. So we can finally see what this thing's trying to tell us. It keeps blinking lights and stuff, but I can't see any digits. I don't know where Ronnie is on this repair, but I'm going to jump in and try to help him a little bit. Uh, Kevin's waiting on me. He's waiting on me to call him. So I got to get this thing done. So I'm going to go ahead and take all these displays and I'm going to reflow them down on the bottom just to try to save some time for Ronnie. And I'm also going to take the solenoid board out and I'm going to check all these transistors. And I'm going to reflow these connectors if they haven't been done. And i got to change these cap, that cap. All right. So thank you, Joe. He knocked that out. So the first step is to do what he just did. He basically added solder to the bottom of each one of the connectors on all five of the displays. Um, and it simply plugs in with that one plug we were looking at. And there is a little slide here. Right? And a slide here. You have to watch and not do this while it's turned on because the uh, the voltage is high. Oh, by the way, don't unplug the displays or plug in the displays while the power is turned on. Bad idea. It'll fry stuff you don't want to fry. Okay, so uh, five displays are in. Let's see if they'll do anything. Now, this is a smoke test. We are literally looking for smoke. What? 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 Yeah, there we go. They're kind of working. Yeah, they're working pretty good, actually. All right. So in the in the uh, coin door, there is a test button. So if you hit that one time, it tests all your lamps for you. And so the three on the little board, the insert board, are just fine. And then if you hit it one more time, it tests all your displays for you. Now you will see that it's also making the lamps blink. That's because of the way they've got, basically they, as they expanded their system to do more and more stuff, They must have used some kind of something on the display control to make that happen. We'll see if we can figure out what's going on with that. I think it's supposed to do that, though. Now, you probably... Okay, this is a good example for you. See the number eight? I keep going on about this. I know none of y'all care about this. I just think it's interesting. On the previous video, we had a problem where the... The lights in this area flicker really weird. 
and it's because there's LEDs in it. There, there's different types of LEDs you can put in the game. Some of them will flicker, some won't. Not, you know, I don't get into LEDs. I don't, I don't really particularly like them. So um, I don't really know the difference. But there are some that don't flicker, supposedly, right? And you can also get a separate board for a bally that will not flicker. So if you look at what's going on, you see lights flashing all over the place. These are all the LEDs. Now remember, these are all original bulbs, right? They're also doing it, but just barely. You can just barely see it. See it? So this is a situation where they designed it with the limitations of the incandescent bulb in mind. On the previous video, since these were all flickering, I replaced the one in the eight ball with a regular bulb just to see if that stopped the flickering, and it did, right? But if you look, the eight ball never comes on. So if all of these were the bulbs that came out at the time, none of them would turn on. You wouldn't be seeing any of this. But this, it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't hurt anything to do this. And it's a personal preference thing. If you like LEDs better, my advice to you would be put LEDs in every damn thing you own. There ain't nothing wrong with it. It's just personal preference. Um, so yeah, all those displays work fine, people. Ain't nothing wrong with them displays. Okay, so next up, we need to test the solenoids. Conveniently, you can do that by also pressing the button. So uh, we've got one here that is not installed. I believe I have it in a box in the other uh, room. Uh, the customer brought us some stuff that wasn't installed on the game yet. I think we've got that. Uh, so that one's not going to fire, but we want to see if all the other ones fire. We've got two kickers here. We've got a drop target assembly over here that apparently isn't working right. Um, we've got drop targets there, and we've got a drop target here. We've also got a saucer here, and then we've got three pop bumpers. So all of those should do something. There's also um, a lockout coil on the coin door. It's not really important. The little clicking you're hearing is a relay that's mounted under the board here, which they're using to flash um, the the some of the general illumination, right? Um, so that obviously is working. And then there's also a relay up here in the back box um, that turns on the flippers, okay? So I'm gonna go to that and we may blow a fuse or something, there might be problems. Got it. Okay. Okay. I've seen enough. All right. So here's what I saw. The out hole kicker is not working because it's not attached. The top saucer is not working. The right drop target reset is not working. And the pop bumpers are just a mess. They're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So that's what we need to look at. So I think first we'll fix the out hole kicker. All right, we had it in the box and I soldered it back on and mounted it in place now. My theory is it's not going to work though. That's why I wanted to do it first. So let's go back into the solenoid test. It did work, okay. All right. Okay, well that helps me figure something out then. So that's good. So the reason I was thinking that it might not work is because if you look, there is this solenoid expander relay and uh, there is the out hole kicker is on one leg of it. And then also 
the four drop target reset. Oh, you know what? That one's working as well. I, it's not the one I thought it was. The um, there There's two drop target resets. Okay, so that one's working as well. But then here is the saucer, and it's not working. So the seven drop target reset is not working. The saucer is not working. Uh, and then our last one is, oh, all the pop bumpers are working, but they're doing crazy stuff. Okay, so next let's look at the saucer and see if we can figure anything out with it. So here at the top of the playfield is the saucer, and uh, it looks all right. Now these do have a kind of strange way of being hooked up. If you look, those of you that are pinheads will notice that this is a little weird. So... There are two diodes, one here, and it's it's similar to a flipper coil, but if you look, one of the lugs is not used. The reason for that is the way that it hooks up to the solenoid expander board. Um, we can look at that on the schematics again, but it looks like this is hooked up right. It doesn't look like it's ever even been removed, because... Remember that the, the uh, customer was doing the uh, a hard top on the top, but he didn't really mess with too much of the stuff under the playfield. So we've got a black and white wire going to a side with a. You know that don't look all that great. I wonder if that wire's broke. We'll ch we'll test it, but there is a black and a white wire going to the side with uh, one end of the non-banded end of the diode and a coil wire. The coil wire wraps around to the other end and then meets the banded end of the diode and then the uh, the um, brown and orange wire meets the cathode side of the diode. I got the anode cathode thing backwards. So the saucer 85 is going to um, the side with the anode of the diode and a wire that goes into the coil and then it goes to the two cathodes of the diodes and then on the other side of the diode the anode of the diode <laughs> is a wire that is number 67 so we've got 67, and we've got 85. Now, how do you figure out what in the world that means? Well, if you look on all these pages, they don't do it on every one. But on many of them, they actually have a little chart where they, where they tell you what the colors mean. Here we go. So 67 is brown and orange, and uh, 85 is black and white which is exactly what we're seeing. So 67 is the one going to the um, solenoid expander board and going to the anode of the diode, going through the diode and then into the coil. So that's actually, it's hooked, it's hooked up correctly. All right, so it's not working. So the next thing we need to do is... Um, Hmm. It should be... Oh, yeah, that's what's going on. Okay, yeah, so look at this. So the solenoid expander relay, if it goes from side to side, if the relay pulls in, this line will connect down here. And so let's call these three relays. There are three coils. There's six of them, but we'll say there's three. See how each one of them is tied together? So see how these two have the same line running to it, but one goes to one side of the relay and one goes to the other side of the relay? So depending on this, the position of this relay, either this one's turned on or that one's turned on. So if we look at what we've got, the outhole kicker is working. The one nine drop target is working. That's the one that's clicking. We haven't seen the drop targets go up yet, but you see how it was twitching? That's because it's trying to drop it. It can actually drop the drop targets on this game on its own without the ball hitting it. And then the four drop target reset is the one on the left. It's actually working. And then the two and 10 drop target is working, but the saucer and the seven drop target reset is not working. So 
we know this line works because this works and this works, right? And we know this line works because this works and this works. And since there's two there, there's, there's nothing common here. So what's common is this line, and then on the other end of this, it's using a transistor on the solenoid driver board to make this and this work. So that transistor could be bad, or you could have a bad wire somewhere, um, or something like that. So uh, we need to trace that wire back, make sure everything's good with it. It could just be that it daisy chains over to the drop target reset and there's something broke or something. Um, or it could, you know, it the more uh, the more common thing. What it usually is is the transistor's bad on the solenoid board. But we've already looked at that a couple times. Joey messed with it, and then I even messed with it uh, working on the displays. But I didn't check all of those little transistors. So maybe we'll go back and look at that one more time. But let me see what I run into. All right, so back to the schematics. There's a lot on this one, people. We've been we're going all the way through this one. Um, Connector J5, pin 10 on the solenoid driver board controls the uh, seven drop target reset. And they're saying that because there are seven drop targets. So there's a big old coil over there that wham, resets all of them at the same time. Or the saucer. So both of those are not working. So we're thinking J5, pin 10. It could be because this chip isn't right. Q8. So we're going to look in and around Q8. All right. As I suspected, when he did the board, there was one transistor that tested bad. Q8, which is the transistor. And he replaced it, but he didn't notice, and I've done the same thing. He didn't notice that when that transistor went bad, it fried the trace. So the... the trace is completely cooked off of the board. All right. Easy enough to fix. It's actually pretty common. I see that all the time. So we need to connect this tra this pin to here. Now this thing looks pretty sloppy. It was like that though. I don't know what in the hell all this is. It might be some kind of flux or something, but it's just how it how it is. So uh, I'm going to run a jumper wire from here to over here to just recreate that trace. And that, that is pretty common. Sometimes if something shorts out or whatever, um, it will do that. But before I put it back in, um, we're going to have to be very careful when we turn it on and see if either one of those coils locks on. The problem could be one of those two coils is bad. And as soon as you turn it on, if it's bad you'll see it, you know, pull in. And if it does, turn it off immediately before it blows your transistor up again. All right, so I got it back in there with the jumper on it. So I'm going to turn it on and see if a coil locks on, which would be either the saucer or the drop targets, I would believe. Uh, and if it does, I'm going to immediately turn it back off, hoping to save the transistor up there, right? Uh, I checked the resistance on the coils, they look fine. And I, I think what's probably going on is the, this board set isn't even out of this machine. If you watched the previous video, the the, the uh, MPU didn't even have the ROMs in it. So I think some of this stuff was out of the uh, Mr. and Mrs. Pac-Man that uh, uh, I think he got some parts from. So we're going to turn it on. Uh, if anything locks on, we'll turn it right back off. But if not, we'll let it boot. And I think what will probably happen if it does boot is it'll probably finally kick all these drop targets up. Seems all right. Yeah. Okay. So let's see if we can get our saucer to work. Yeah, I saw it. All right. So, um, I don't know if you saw it, but sometimes those will kick when this kicks. 
So sometimes pop bumpers will be uh, overly snappy if they're adjusted too closely. So if they're real close, any kind of vibration will make that thing touch and it'll make the pop bumper go off. Because all, that's, all that is needed to make the pop bumper fire is for this skirt to make the two switches touch underneath. So it could be that they're just too closely gapped. And the reason these two could be going on at the same time is because either one of them is too tightly gapped. So this one, since it's right next to it, when that coil pulls in, it's violent, you know, boom. So it's shaking things, which is actually shaking that switch shut. That's the theory. We'll see if that's correct. So if we look closely, if we can look closely, I think I said if we can look closely. Let's see if we can look closely. Can I get the camera over there to it? Can we go through the weeds here? Where are we? Oh, what is that? What is that? What is that I see through the jungle? Oh, that's the pop bumper stuck shut. That's what that is. Ah, uh -huh, almost like I've done this before. Well, it's better. Okay, so these two are still linked. That one's isolated. And the uh, everything else is isolated. So it'd be okay like that, but I want to see if it's supposed to be like that. Okay, so um, whenever you get stuff like this, usually it's something to do with the switches. The lights usually don't do it. It's usually, because if you think about it, the switches are an input. So the switches tell the computer what coil to fire, what light to light up, all of that. And they also, the computer is also trying to run the test and pop all the pop all the coils. So if you noticed, whenever we found that one switch was connected, it wasn't that it was making this fire necessarily. It was that that switch being connected was screwing up uh, the computer doing its thing. And so it got confused on what to pop, right? So at that time, it was making this left kicker fire, and it was also making uh, one of these pop bumpers fire. But whenever one of these pop bumpers fire, one of the other ones fires, right? And then this one was doing it too, and there was just a bunch of stuff going on because there was a switch stuck closed. Well, the solenoid board looks fine. You know, we done looked at it three times, but look what I just saw. So on the back of these drop targets, there's a switch that the drop target hits when it falls. And it is open. Right? That one may be a little too far open. <laughs> That one's open too. But if you look over here, look at this. There is a wire wrapped around the switch that has it jammed closed. All right. It's not that one, it's this one. And so now that that wire's out of there. switch can open up. I think that's probably going to be it. That's why at the beginning of the game, if you noticed, the last time we did it, I, th I don't know if you, I recorded that, but this didn't reset. The reason this didn't reset was because it was already up. None of these were closed. This one would reset at the beginning of every game. That's because it kept seeing that one closed. So, um, I think that's probably the problem, but we'll see. All right, that did not fix it. So I've, I'm in switch test, and there are no switches locked on. So what I did next was there is a little capacitor on each switch, that little disc capacitor. 
sometimes the, you know, that thing could be leaky and screwed up and it's been hot and all that, you know. So I cut the one off of this one and I cut the one off of this one. It'll still work without that capacitor. That capacitor is to expand the pulse of the, the switch. So whenever the switch touches, if you just barely touch it, the capacitor makes it a little wider so that the really slow MPU that's in these things can see that, right? So now I've isolated them, but sometimes you'll see the other one bounce too, but so I'm gonna hit the left one. Well, now watch this, I'm hitting the left switch. See how the right pop bumper went? Now if I hit the right switch, the left pop bumper goes. So if I hit the left one, left is 39. But if you look in the manual of the switches, right is 39. So they've got the freaking wires switched on the two thumper bumpers. So I'm going to swap that back. All right, got that fixed. All the coils are working 100%. Okay, folks, so the next thing we need to do is the mighty squawk and talk. So, Valley back in the day named some of their soundboards funny things. This thing is literally called the squawk and talk. Um, I'm curious if this is an 8-ball deluxe one or not. If it isn't, it'll just make the wrong sound, so we'll see. There's another one, too, in the uh, box that the gentleman brought with him. Okay, so this is um, basically the way Bally did their stuff. Really, Williams did this, too, but the soundboard is its own computer. Um, but it receives signals from the other computer. And the reason that they did it like this was so that they could do it kind of compartmentalized. So... Basically, since this is its own thing, you can replace it with another th one that's better or whatever. So I don't know if they knew ahead of time that uh, they were going to be able to make better and better soundboards, but that's what happened. So they had uh, the original games that used this MPU used chimes. And then they had a little board that basically was a little bit, it was like an electronic chime board, but it had a, you know just a few more chimes. It didn't only have three notes or four notes. Um, and then they eventually got up to one that was a little more complex that could play some nice little tunes and stuff. And eventually we got uh, up to this. Oh, along the way you had the um, vocalizer board that was in Xenon. Xenon! Um, and eventually you got to this, the Squawk and Talk. So as the name says, it can actually talk. Centaur had this board in it as well. Um, Centaur actually had a echo board on it too. So very cool. But here we go. Since it's a computer, it's ran by a 6808, and then it has two PIA chips. So a 6821 is a peripheral interface adapter chip uh, that works with the 6002 um, CPU, you know, setup. 6808 being a 6802 with internal clock or without uh, the internal clock, something like that. I guess this is the clock. So, um, But anyway, you get my point. Um, and then we have a little sound generator chip here. Sound AY-3-8912. This is very popular. It was in all kinds of stuff. So that's going to be making like a lot of your background melodies and stuff. The 6810 chip, this is the RAM. And then here you have the ROMs. Right? Uh, and then this PIA, Peripheral Interface Adapter, uh, is going to uh, interface with this TMS5200. I can't remember what that does. And I'm wondering if we're missing something here. But AD558, that's probably a DAC digital to analog converter if I was just going to guess. Not sure. I, I wonder if this is the speech chip or if it went here. 
I believe this is the chip that makes the the Rock'em <laughs> or whatever it says. Uh, okay, so we're just going to fire it up, see if she does anything the way that it is. I'm going to go with there ain't no way in hell it's going to work, but we'll see. I might be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hear I hear a hum out of the speaker. Well, I don't hear anything. There is a soundboard test. Actually, you can just hit this button and it'll test it. But it should have done something whenever it started. You see we have a sound volume here. And then we also have a speech volume. Did you hear that? You hear it, right? So I'm just rubbing the volume knob and rubbing some of the circuitry here. So just the capacitance in your skin. Oh, what? It's trying to come back to life. Just the capacitance in your skin uh, makes, you know, puts a little electricity in it, makes things happen. Okay, well, let's watch the LED here. I just saw it blinking a second ago, so I think it had reset by me shocking it with my finger. Now we get nothing. Maybe the button's stuck now. All right, so light stuck on. It's a similar thing to the MPU that we messed with. Basically, this thing's trying to run a program. It's trying to tell that light to blink and do a little self-test and all it is, and it's crashed right now. Okay, so I'm going to turn it off, and instead of looking at this one, we're going to look at that LED and see if it tells us anything. It can't speak right now, but maybe maybe the LED will show us something. One, two, three, four, five, six. You saw it, right? Yeah, there we go. Now, it could be the wrong board. That didn't really sound like any kind of 8-ball uh, deluxe thing to me. Uh, but it also could be that only part of it's working. Maybe the, the background sounds working, but the speech isn't. It also could be that the speech is turned off. So we're going to go into test again. And I believe there is a soundboard test. So that's one, two, three. It, yep. All right. Well, that sound is world famous. Now, um, you know what that's from, right? That's from the uh, Mr. and Mrs. Pac-Man pinball machine, which is a pretty cool machine. There is a little maze in the play field of that, and you are running away from one of the ghosts, and whenever the ghost gets you, it goes, gotcha, which I always thought was awesome. Um, so our self-test isn't working. But I've seen it before where they don't all have the self-test, so I don't know about the squawk and talk. All right, so we're, here's what we're going to do first. We're going to take the board out, we're going to clean all of the chips, and then we're going to do what we usually do and resolder these. Uh, we know it needs that. We're also going to replace these two volume knobs. These are known for not being any good. Look at them. The damn things just fall apart. So we're going to replace those. Um, and uh, we're going to clean all of the chips. Like if this is the speech generator. I mean, come on. 
Come, 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 people, it's not going. Come, come on, people. People, it's it's got dirt. If it, it it's not going to, it, it it can't do the got gotcha. It can't do that. If if it ain't it, it it can't touch the socket. Come on, come on, people. You know that's not going to work. I told you. Here we go again. I told you it wasn't going to work, and you all thought it was going to work, and now here we are. It All right, so there is another one in the box. I'll bet this is the one out of the 8-Ball Deluxe. It's interesting that it has a header here, which um, I'm not sure what that would have been for. That might have been what was used to hook up the uh, vocalizer board, but I don't think it was. Not the vocalizer board, the, um, the echo board on Centaur or something. Uh, and also we have a cap kit here. So I'm assuming he probably wants me to fix this one because it looks better. And maybe put the, if this is 8-Ball Deluxe, put the 8-Ball Deluxe ROMs in it. It looks like there's one jumper that's different. So we'll have to look into that. Um... So yeah, we'll see. So I'm going to look at these part numbers and see if I can figure out if this is in fact an 8-Ball Deluxe board. Okay, folks, so I replaced all of the caps. A nice little cap kit. Where did he get that? Looks like he got it from Marco. We love Marco. We buy stuff from them all the time. They're right down the road. He got it in July of 23. Um, I got all that in. Now remember, it was working, kind of. I cleaned every chip, removed them from the socket, I cleaned the legs with a fillet. And you can see that it cleaned up the speech chip pretty good and we did not break any legs. So I think it may actually work. Maybe. Hopefully. Um, and then I left, I cleaned the the EPROMs, but I left the EPROMs in it that were in it. Now it's the wrong board. It's basically a Mr. and Mrs. Pac-Man. So what we're going to do is we're going to try it back in the game and see if there's any way we can get the gotcha to work, the sound to work. Um, and I, I replaced the two volume knobs. Those are the, if you're not going to do anything to yours, that's the one thing to do. Those little volume knobs suck on the original one. They're 1K pots. Okay, so I'm going to pop it back in and we'll see if we get anything different. All right, folks, I worked on the squawk and talk for quite a while. And I can't figure out what's going on with it. So, I tried out the other squawk and talk. And it was halfway working. I cleaned all the chips. It already had a cap kit installed. And uh, it seems to be working fine. Um, I have installed the three light strips, the LED strips that the gentleman sent. I made up a little harness. And then, believe it or not, there's no general illumination line anywhere in the head. Except for one place actually on the squawk and talk so there the gi uh, voltage comes up to the squawk and talk and that capacitor is across it now the little led thing comes with some little alligator clips and it's a mod and you're supposed to just clip it onto a uh, a wire somewhere like the ones that we stapled down here to get your your voltage for that mod so this isn't the best way to do it, but uh, what's the other way to do it? You know what I mean? They're on, the only place that the voltage is is right here on this connector. And it's a, a IDC connector, insulation displacement connector. So you could replace that whole connector. But the reason they use that is because see how the lines run through it? They're on both sides of it. So you end up with two wires on each pin. It goes through it, and that's why they use the insulation displacement connector on that particular one, because some of those lines go to other places. Um, I think the lamp board, I think. Um, so it's a mod, so I just clipped it like you would clip the model, and I just clipped it on the capacitor, and it's working great. So what can you say? It's going to tell me to quit talking and start chalking here in a minute. 
Um, I looked in the box that the gentleman brought us, and there was a, a cap kit for this thing. So whenever we only did that cap, we also had that one that he had in his bag. So I went ahead and put it in, and then the one over here as well, uh, since he brought those with him. Um, the battery I did not replace. You don't really need a battery on a Bally game. And that thing is in perfect shape with no battery damage. So you could put a remote battery pack on it with AA batteries on it or something. Um, you could put a super cap on it, but you'd have to drill a hole in the board. You could put a button battery on it, but you'd have to drill a hole in the board. But I think it's been without a battery for a long time. So um, uh, if, if he would like it to save high scores, he might want to change out the 5101 with a... Uh, NV RAM, they call it. So there's a little kit you can put in it that just plugs into the socket. But that's easy enough. Quit talking and start talking. All right, give me a minute. So uh, so there's that. Got that all battened down. In the back box, there is supposed to be a ground strap. Just connecting that metal that goes behind everything, which isn't really metal, it's foil. Uh, to the strap that runs down to the bottom to the power supply. So I stapled that in and screwed the strap to it like it's supposed to be to join them together. Uh, what else did we do? What else have we got here? Of course, I put in the light bar things. Like I said, that one's a little bit higher, but once the glass is on it, they'll light up the same. I uh, mounted the board in there with the screws and then uh, put the cleaned off the plexi and put it on. Looks pretty good. Um, I put the one, the eight ball LED back in. I was just doing that to test if that was the issue. Uh, and that's about it. So I guess it's time to play it a little bit just to make sure that she works. I forgot to tell you, there was one other thing that was significant. The cabinet is racked a little bit. You can just barely see it. Um... I've kind of hit it a little bit, but do you see how you can see the bottom of the apron here? Over here you can't quite see as much. It's just minor, but... See the scratch there? Basically the cabinet is just slightly out of square. He said that whenever he got this thing it was the whole top was messed up and stuff, so I don't know what happened to it, but it's not quite square. So because of that, when the new overlay was put on, or whenever all the stuff was put back on it, the shooter rod did not line up with the ball in the shooter lane. And it's just because the the cabinet is just slightly, it's just wacky-jawed. <laughs> Walkie jawed. I learned that one on uh, Moonshiners. Great show. You ought to watch it if you're not. So um, it was a little bit walkie jawed. Eight ball deluxe. Woo! So because of that, the the shooter rod didn't line up with where the ball was sitting on the playfield. It was too far to the left. So when you hit it, it would just go right. It wasn't smooth. You didn't get a nice out of it. So how do you fix that? Well, you need to get the tip of the shooter rod that way, right? And it was pretty significant. It was off about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe a little bit more. Which isn't a you know the end of the world, but if it's not hitting the ball clean, just having a bad shooter lane shot is bad, right? So the way I fixed it was I had to put a little washer under that side of the shooter rod. So what that's doing is, you know, it's usually like this, but there's a washer over here, which is making it tilt, right? So it's in there canted now. Now I'm doing an extreme. It's more like that, right? <laughs> right? It's just barely, but it's enough to make it hit the center of the ball and it shoots out, right? Now on this, on the back of that, there was an adjustment where you can move that thing all around up and down and blah, 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 blah. It looks real pretty when it's perfectly straight and right at the perfect angle, right? But that's not always 
if your cabinet's not perfectly square, sometimes you need to tilt it a little bit or move it around because more important than it being perfectly straight on the front is that it hits that ball perfect. So that's that. All right, folks, so I have installed, uh, when I burnt, burnt the ROMs, I burnt special free play ROMs. So there's a couple dip switches if you turn them on. Um, basically, if the setting that's usually used to tell it to store up to 40 credits, if you turn that on, instead of storing 40 credits, it tells it don't ever go below, below one credit. So basically, it puts it on free play. I'll, that's really cool because you can turn it off if you want by just turning off the dip switches. Um, and uh, we'll see if she works. Now, pers personally, it's a... Uh, I've got the background sound on. I just think that's cool. And um, even though it's kind of almost space soundy. Um, and it's a speech game. So any game that has speech, I usually turn up the speech louder than the sound effects just because I think it sounds cool that way. But, you know, it's a volume knob on the Squawk and Talk board. That was that, those two that we replaced. The knocker worked. Why, why did the knocker go off? The, uh, I think the knocker thing is on those, um, I think that was actually a skill shot, the knocker that you heard. On the prototype version of this game, there was a skill shot, and I think they took it out in the regular version, but on the free play ROMs that I've put in here, I think they added the skill shot back in. I believe that's what happened. Where is C? Left lane there. <laughs> One more game. Chalk up. Go for B. Okay. I'll do that. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. I did make the eight ball. Why didn't it count? Kiss the glass a little bit. Boy, she plays pretty smooth. I adjusted a couple things, like the. Uh, The lane guides here, whatever you call those. Oh, I bricked it. Well, the only way to make that eight ball is with the left flipper, I think. You might be able to get it up there with the left upper flipper. I'm trying. Woo! Beat up in banks. Oh, 
Other, it's the drop target. Oh, I see what's going on. The eight ball is the drop target. The eight ball is the drop target. The switch must not work. It must be adjusted out too far. The one I didn't check on the entire machine. So since it's open right now, it doesn't know that it's down. See how it's halfway up the back glass, the, the plastic? I couldn't test that one from the top. So uh, you'd think it would know, though, that since I'm landing in the saucer, that the eight ball drop target must be down, but it does not. Okay, let me see if I can fix that. Now listen to this. That's the contact tapping the other contact because it is just barely not touching. It looks like it's touching, but if you tap it, you can hear it because it's not touching. If you touch one that's already down and do that, get it, got it, good. All right, now I turned it off without the, uh, it doesn't have the battery in it. So let's see if it saved the sound setting. Chalk up. It seems to have. Our drop target is back up, so it must know that that thing was down. Speed up in banks. These slings, he's got adjusted a little tight. They need to be a little looser than that, so they'll slap it around a little bit. You know, these pinball machines, they're never completely done. Look, the middle light on the rollovers up there, too. See that one? Always something. There's always just a few little things, and then when you get them done, there's a few more. Oh, it spotted me a a, a, a ball. I wonder why that one drop. Why does that one, uh, there's the eight, but it didn't give it to me. Oh, you got to do both, I guess. Maybe. The light's out. Ooh, I almost did. All right, so I need to adjust the slings a little better where they're a little snappier. Um, I didn't really mess with those. The customer did all this beautiful work on the play field. It looks great. Uh, and then there's a light bulb up there in the middle rollover uh, light, co light cover that's decided to stop working. And uh, the eight ball thing I think is working as intended. It says first and third players uh, play solid balls one through seven. Eight ball target lights when all solid or all striped balls are made. Ooh. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we try one more time. One more time. I mean, that makes sense, you know. Maybe it'll pop the drop target back up after that. Ooh. That's all I got. I could cheat like Todd does. Todd, I've seen you cheat. But I would, I would never. Whoa. Now I'll bet if Todd and I played a two player game, he would beat me. I'm not saying he, he's no good. <laughs> Six ball. Six ball. Seven ball. Oh yeah, it's right there. Look, there's just one. 
How am I going to get over there to it? I'm going to have to use the left flipper. Make the A. Make the 7 now. Oh! Well, I, could, I'm, I wonder if it would spot it for me. Oh, well, we'll never know. We'll just have to watch my other video, other, uh, the other time I played it and see if, <laughs> see if it does it. So there you go, folks. Leave your comments below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. We didn't have to do all that. Hope the customer is happy with it. It's a beautiful game. I think it turned out very nice. And uh, we're going to call him and tell him that it's ready for him to come give it a little test spin and see what he thinks. So I think we... Uh, I think we got everything strapped back in it where it goes. Everything seems to be working. We repaired the uh, uh, solenoid driver board, the MPU, the lamp driver board, the uh, uh, the what's it was it called the auxiliary lamp driver board? What do they call that one? The second one, the squawk and talk, um, mounted a few lights. Uh, and, you know, just various minor things. Oh, uh, the displays. They weren't too bad, though. But we got her all going. I think it looks great, so I hope he enjoys it. Once it goes back to its new home, we haven't seen it with the back glass in it yet, but um, I actually own one of these, two. I've got in storage. One of these days we're going to bring it in and fix it. But we've got one in storage that we've had for quite a while that we just... Uh, the play field is really bad on it. So I know why he put the overlay on it. His play field was probably really bad too. I think on ours it's down to the wood pretty in like a huge area. Um, and we're going to put an overlay on ours too. One of these days, whenever we bring that in. But it's going to be a big job. So that's why we haven't done it yet. So uh, we will see you on the next video. Hey, don't forget to check out our other channel, Amateur Repair Time. On Amateur Repair Time, we don't do arcade games, pinball machines, or jukeboxes. We work on old clocks, old radios, old record players, old uh, uh, projectors, things like that. And boy, I have a good time. So I hope you enjoy that. If, you, if you're into that kind of thing, check it out. It's called Amateur Repair Time. And don't, last but not least, don't forget to check out our brother Donnie. Now, we call the channel My Brother Donnie, and the link is down below. So, uh, Or you can just type My Brother Donnie in YouTube, and it will pop up. I'm over there with him on his channel a lot. We work on pinball machines, arcade games, and jukeboxes. My brother Donnie works on old cars, old via, uh, old buildings, and he has a farm. And and fun things happen at the farm all the time. So <laughs> I'm over there with him on that channel a lot. I will see you over there, but we'll see you back here in a couple days with yet another great episode of Joe's Classic Video Games. Have a good evening.